So let's solve the mystery how current can flow in this electronics for the little plasma disc and also for the larger plasma disc and plasma ball when the high voltage converter has only one pin going to the plasma disc and then how can the current flow back or where is the return path here to the other pin of the little transformer. Well the hint that I gave you is I told you this is a little oscillator and you can see there is no rectification so the output is also an AC voltage and with AC voltages you also have capacitive coupling so from the plasma disk you always have a parasitic capacitor going to everywhere it goes to earth because some of the high voltage gimmicks are uh, connected to earth with the other pin here we need the connection to the second output of the high voltage transformer and this is simply by the capacitor and we will try later to measure the current with the larger plasma discs and plasma balls it's not guaranteed that this will work because these uh, oscillators for high voltage generation they are often in a frequency between 50 and 100 kilohertz and there the sensitivity of a multimeter can drop substantially so by chance we we of course have our 121 GW or our XTEC multimeter here which go up to 100 uh, kilohertz so we'll see if we can measure the AC current through well I will put in my finger here to show you or to test if we can measure the current on the capacitive return path and this phenomenon you happen to encounter quite often I've already demonstrated this in another video that even an isolation transformer is not 100% isolating I will link in the video down below in the description because for example also here we have a primary winding and a secondary winding and there is a little parasitic capacitance so for AC voltages a transformer is not 100% isolating you might have also encountered this phenomenon with radio or TV receivers without an antenna if, if you're coming near with your finger to the antenna jack the reception will already start because your body serves as the antenna and even though there is still some millimeters of air between your finger and the antenna jack the capacitive coupling can couple in a reception signal from your body to the antenna input so uh, you should always remember that whenever you are working with AC voltages you have to watch out for capacitive coupling and because you can look at a capacitor as a kind of frequency dependent resistor with the impedance of 1 over 2 pi times the frequency and that means the higher the frequency the lower the impedance for AC voltages and that means the higher the frequency the more serious problems with even picofarad or femtofarad capacitors come into play sometimes to ruin your measurement so always watch out for capacitive coupling and now let's try out if we can measure the current with a large plasma disc or plasma ball so and how severe capacitive coupling can be I, I didn't try this out before you can see here we have our multimeter a few centimeters away and we have the worst possible conditions for EMI for a multimeter or any other measurement instrument we have a high electric field plus we have high frequency which means any parasitic capacitance will influence the multimeter quite a lot and you can see even without connections even if I short out the multimeter we can still see we have around 100 microamps as a false current flowing from capacitive coupling from here inside the multimeter circuit and now uh, if we connect one pin with a plasma disk oh, I, before that I'll show you that the problem becomes severer when I get nearer 
you see now we have 0.5 milliamps or 400 to 500 microamps and if I go further away the display becomes the false current becomes smaller so now I'm connecting one pin doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because we have AC with a plasma disc and the other which you can see at the moment with protective earth and you can see the current goes up 2.7 milliamps that's because although the plasma disc is not directly connected to protective earth but again the little wall ward adapter has again a capacitive coupling from the circuit inside to protective earth. So let's repeat this again. Going up from 0.3 to 0.7 milliamps. So that's a clear indication how the current flows. It's AC current and I, we can also try this with my hand. Let's see. So I've now connected the black lead with protective earth the red one I'm holding here with one finger and you can see now if I come nearer the current goes up and when I'm touching it it goes up to 3 milliamps. Normally you would say well can't you feel a little current flowing in your finger? No you can't because with high frequency currents like in Tesla coils for example the polarization in the human cells that is just too fast the molecules are just wiggling a little bit around their center positions in, in the human cells. And neither is this dangerous, nor does it have, nor can you feel it. It only becomes dangerous with Tesla coils, for example, when the heat induced by the resistance of your human body uh, becomes so large, you can, you can, for example, burn your finger uh, where the little lightning or flash streaks come into your finger when you're catching a flash from a Tesla coil, at least from a larger one, uh, from a smaller one. The larger ones are of course really dangerous because they have kilowatts of power. But you can see this is absolutely secure for a human, although 3 milliamps are already quite substantial. A DC current you would feel immediately if there are 3 milliamps flowing through your body. And this is even the worst thing I'm doing here because the current flows through my left arm, through my heart and then to the right arm. So I know what I'm doing here, that this is really safe. But if you would do this with a high voltage DC voltage, this could be quite dangerous. So, nice effect and remember capacitive coupling, whenever taking measurements, whenever you have strange signal readings on your multimeter or on your test and measurement equipment, always remember couldn't it be capacitive coupling or the other way. There is of course also inductive coupling, especially when you have high currents flowing which generate high or strong magnetic fields. Here we have high electric fields and they are usually capacitive coupling comes more into play. So that was the explanation and now let's tear these two devices, the plasma disc and the plasma ball apart and see what's inside.